Okay, so now let's do an example for Geotech covering the triaxial compression test. So we know we use this test to determine certain shear strength properties such as the cohesion and most importantly the internal friction angle. So we know this test involves confinement in the horizontal direction. So we have confining fluid or air pressure and at the same time we have actually vertical load. So we increase this gradually until failure and from that we can determine certain shear strength properties such as cohesion and internal friction angle and we know the word triaxial comes from the fact that we have essentially three principal stresses when we're looking at the triaxial compression test so compared to the unconfined compression test you have to note this here we have no confining stress so we know we only have the vertical load, so we only have a major principal stress for the unconfined compression test. But here we're focusing on the triaxial compression test. So real quick, let's draw a quick picture. So what we do is take our specimen. So let's say we have a cylindrical specimen that has a certain diameter D. And we apply a stress on top, and I'm going to call it delta sigma. So this is the vertical load, which is the actual stress, applied actual stress. And this is essentially just the pressure over the area. So that's in the vertical. And we also have the confining stress. So we have confining stress that's in both directions. This is the horizontal stress. And we call this sigma 3. Let's call it sigma 3 here. And we know that we have, we will always have three stresses. We have the major principal stress, we have the intermediate principal stress, and we have the minor principal stress. But usually we want to focus on the maximum and minimum. So we're usually looking at the major and minor. You might recall from more circle when you're looking at mechanics and materials, we want to look and plot the major and minor. So we know that the major principal stress will call sigma 1, and this will equal to the delta sigma which is the actual load there the actual stress on top and what we do is take that and also add it to the confining pressure so we add sigma 3 so this is the major principal stress this is the maximum and the uh, intermediate and minor in a triaxial test will equal to each other so the intermediate is sigma 2 and this will equal to sigma 3 which is the minor sigma 3 is always the minor and when we're looking at this specifically for a triaxial test it will look something like this when we're looking at a cube we will have essentially when we're looking just at the stresses we will have the sigma 1 which is the major this is in 3d we will look at sigma 3 which is going to be the minor and then we will have this one which is what sigma 2 which equals to sigma 3 when we're looking at the triaxial we're mostly concerned in the 2d view that's why we're only looking at the sigma 1 which is the major it's always bigger than the minor which is sigma 3 and that's why it's triaxial sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 so now let's do an example real quick. So what we have here is a consolidated undrained triaxial compression test is conducted on a 2.5 inch diameter clay sample. From the test, shear strength parameters were determined with an internal friction angle of 22 degrees and cohesion of 6, 650 PSF. So PSF is pounds per square foot. The vertical load at failure is 135 pounds. The shear strength in PSI of the soil is most nearly what? And we want the answer in PSI. So the first thing I recommend is write what we're given. Because we notice that certain parameters are not defined by symbols, right? We have to define these. So we know that the diameter, I'll call lowercase d for the sample, is 2.5 inches. Okay? And we know that the internal friction angle phi will be 22 degrees and what else we have the cohesion is 650 psi this is lowercase c 650 
PSF, sorry, not PSI, pound per square foot. And the vertical load at failure, load we know from mechanics and materials, you might recall the symbol we use is P, right? P. So it's 135 pounds. That's at failure. I'll call it P sub F, the vertical load at failure. We want to find, let's write what we want to find. The shear stress at failure, right? The shear strength. And shear is always tau, F, and we want it in units of PSI, pound per inch squared. So let's do the solution here. We know we're using essentially one handy equation, and this is based on the Moore Coulomb failure envelope, right? And this is in the handbook, and the equation will be the following. So we will write tau F equals to the cohesion plus sigma N. And this is sigma N, the normal stress at failure. So that's important. This is the normal stress at failure. And we take tan of phi. So we know this is based on the more Coulomb failure envelope. And this is also in the handbook. So we know in the new FE handbook, there's a more Coulomb failure envelope figure. And it's on the specifically, let me check what page. I believe it should be on the new handbook on page 262. So it's, it's at the bottom of the page, and we know at this failure stress, we will have a shear failure because we hit that line, right? And what we did there in the more Coulomb failure envelope, let me just draw that real quick, just to show you how this is relevant to the major and minor principal stresses. What we have is just a line, right? We have this line, and we have our essentially a uh, half of a circle here so half of a circle and we have we plot the sigma 1 and sigma 3 right which is the major and minor principal stresses which we get from the triaxial test from there we can determine the angle here which is phi the internal friction angle and we can also arrive at a cohesion value right so this is very relevant to the triaxial test because it allows us to determine the major and minor principal stresses, plot these, and at the end get this values, these phi and C value. So from there, let's just solve this question real quick. We know we have C, which is what we wrote as a given. It's in PSF, so we will need to convert that because we want the answer in pound per inch squared. We have the phi angle. What we do not have is sigma n. So let's offer sigma n. Sigma n equals the load over the area. It's stress. Stress is always load over area. We know the load in this case at failure is 135 pounds. And we know the stress will be, sorry, the area will be pi d squared over 4. So what's d? d in this case is 2.5 inches. So 2.5 inches squared over 4 and we can solve for sigma n and for that you should get around 27.50 psi so it's pound per square inches pound per inches squared right so we have sigma n let's plug that in here and solve for tau f the shear stress at failure so tau f equals to the c value and we know we need c in p SI. Be careful here. This is in PSF. We're working everything is pound inches. So we need to convert this to PSI. I'll just do it up here. So we know this is 650. We can write this as C equals 650 pound per foot squared. And we know what we do here. We know one foot squared has 12 inches squared, right? 12 inches. Don't forget to square this. So we get the C value here is about 4.51 PSI. So be careful with the units. This is the C value, 4.51 PSI. So we plug that in here, 4.51 PSI. And that's the C value. Then we add a sigma n, 10 a phi. Plus sigma n is this.
10. What's phi? We know phi is 22 degrees, right? This is given the internal friction angle, which was determined from this triaxial test, is 22 degrees. So now we just solve for tau f. The shear stress at failure is going to be about 15.62 psi. So this is our answer. And it should be C. That's it. Thank you.